What's going on, Novi? And welcome back to Cultureverse, season two, episode one. Sadly, my old co-host Matia is not here. We'll miss you, Matia. And we'll always have you in our hearts. Today, we have a, we have a guest. Likely chances for the next couple of weeks is going to be a guest. Uh, so this week's guest, we have Caleb White. Caleb, say what's up. What's up? All right, perfect. So I realized um, just throughout the summer that I wanted to switch things up a little bit so you guys can kind of get an understanding of how we were as people and our takes on pop culture and, and things like that. So we're going to get into our topics as usual in a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do, though, is something called Hot Takes. Uh, I got this from somebody who runs a podcast. Uh, his name is Alex and Andrew, they run a podcast called The Escape Pod. I love those guys. Alex, Alex, much love to you, man. Appreciate you. So basically what Hot Takes is, is we're going to say a hot take and the person, so someone's going to say a hot take. The person that is being told the hot take, if they give a reaction to it, then the person that gave the hot take gets a point. And it's just like a point system, you know, bragging rights is the the reward so Caleb since you're our guest uh, go ahead and give me your first hot take all right I already know you're gonna have a reaction to this because I've said it before but uh Thor Love and Thunder was the worst MCU project ever that's fair I'm not even mad at it I agree. really absolutely you, no. said, you said you liked it I did I, I I said it was a fun watch but not a good movie mm. I think that the I didn't find it fun at all no, I thought it was like, you know, it wasn't good, but it was fun. That's that was my like whole thought process to it. And that is a fair take because I think phase four of the MCU was definitely the worst phase. And I think that's just an objective yeah. statement, you know. So to be honest, I'm not mad at that. All right. Okay. You ready for my hot take? Yeah. All right. Anime is the best thing for the action genre. I mean that's true. You agree? It's not hot. All right. You you agree? Yeah. I okay. mean they got the best like fighting scenes. Like okay. the animation just fits with the action and fighting. I mean, okay, yeah, it's good. All right. Yeah. No problem. All right. Not all right. I mean, I right. I didn't think you would get that one. All right. Go ahead. All right. Uh, Infinity War was the best movie for superheroes. Like straight up. Like I'm not saying it's the best comic book movie. I'm not saying it's the best story or anything. But if you want to see superheroes, you watch Infinity War. Like for like when you want to see a bunch of superheroes? Just superheroes in general. Like you you would consider Logan a good comic book movie, right? Right. But if you want to see superheroes, you don't go and see Logan. You, right. You would probably go and see something like Infinity War. And it's the best movie for superheroes. <clears throat> I disagree wholeheartedly. <laughs> okay, then, then then what would your answer be? Endgame. If you want to see, su yes, if you want to see superheroes, nah, you man. watch Endgame. That's just fact. You I have feel like all Infinity the superheroes War, together. It sets it up much better than like you can't have Endgame without Infinity War. Infinity War was the setup, and personally, I think Infinity War is better than Endgame. Okay, I think that's fair. A lot of people think that. I'm just saying, if you want to see superheroes, Endgame is where it is because you want to sit for three hours yes. and wait for a fight. Absolutely, I'm seeing superheroes. Right. That was your whole thing, but that's a point too. You got me on okay. that one. You got me on that one. Okay. That's a point too. Oh, <laughs> DC comics are better than Marvel comic comics. Okay, that's just facts. Oh, you agree? Yeah, I thought you were a Marvel guy. I am, but I think DC is better. I'm just waiting for DC to come out with good movies. <sighs> I really thought I would get a reaction out of you. I mean, like... I agree. Yeah. I have more DC comics than Marvel comics. What's your favorite comic? My favorite DC comic? Mm-hmm. I don't know, bro. Right now, I'm reading The Flash. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Right now, I'm reading Heroes in Crisis. Heroes in Crisis is really good. I like that one a lot. Um, my favorite, though, is Dark Knight to Steel. That's pretty good. It's very good. I like the new take, like the medieval take. It's really yeah. good and interesting. Yeah, it's pretty good. Tom Taylor is a really good writer. Um, he wrote um, The Adventures of John Kent and the Nightwing series. 
at towards like the the latest kind of Nightwing kind of series with that ant like that uh writing style. Mm. That's Tom Taylor's work. I like him a lot. He's really good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, this isn't really hot. Uh, Cyborg should always be in the Teen Titans first. Hmm. I absolutely hate it when they just throw him into the Justice League. Oh. <sighs> like, he can graduate into it. I guess. Never should he just be straight into the Justice League. Bro. It doesn't make any sense. I feel like... I don't know. I feel like the character of cyborg is because he started off as a justice league member i'm pretty sure like his first kind of appearance i think in like new 52 or something in new 52 i'm pretty sure yeah yeah um i just he he seems more fitting to be in the justice league straight up first though really he's like literally the motherboard but he's like Bro, he, like the Teen Titans are his actual friends, though. That's true. And like the Teen Titans, that whole like thing with like him and Beast Boy and everything, he helps him become himself and accept that he's you know cyborg now and not just a guy. I don't know. I, I mean, I guess I just feel like since he is so powerful and can do so much, he kind of has to be on the Justice League. That's because that's just got, what I mean. You got like Kid Flash and stuff who are like broken, basically. And they're still on, you know, because they don't want to be in the Justice League. They want to be with the, they want to be in the Titans. I guess. My, my favorite Titans team in the comics is Nightwing, Donna Troy, Omen, Wally, Roy, and like Roy Harper and Aqualad. That's my favorite team. I feel like I like their chemistry the most. It's really good. Anyways. My I take wait, you did your third one. Yeah, that's my okay. third. Star Wars has the best storyline in fiction. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, you can have that point, bro. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. I, I just I can't I can't agree with that at all. Why? I can I cannot get behind Star Wars. I'm sorry, bro. Why? Do you like, think the movies are boring? I like everything about Star Wars except for the movies. Like, the shows are good. The shows are great. Like, the games are good. Games everything. Are great. But when it comes to the movies, bro, they're just, I just. But there's a it. point. There's a point as to what I'm saying. Also, my right. last take, that's a hot take. Like, I've said this to a few people. It started some fires. Um, All right. I would say that the movies, I like the movies. I'm not too fond of the last three. I did like Force Awakens a lot, though. But when I say the storyline, I just think, like, comics, games, movies, shows, since they're all tied together, okay. the callbacks, the uh, references, the story of, like, the whole thing. My favorite fight in is in Rebels, the Ahsoka versus Darth Vader fight, when the whole thing was in Clone Wars, Ahsoka left Anakin in the order because she felt like, she can't stay there since the order can't trust her. And when the when she got framed, Anakin was like, I'm gonna help you. I would never let anything hurt you. Ever. Right? And that's very important because in Rebels, when Ahsoka realizes that Darth Vader is Anakin, but she never she didn't want to accept that before. When she found out that Darth Vader was Anakin when she cut his mask, and she says, I won't leave you, not this time. And you can see Anakin come back a little bit because he kind of looks down for a second. You can tell that he's like, wait, what if I just go with her? Maybe this things could be said right. But then he looks back and he just says, then you will die. Like, that's just like so that's such great writing to me. I really do think that's such great writing to me. And you know what I'm saying? And the the, um, Darth Maul versus Obi-Wan fight. So much symbolism in that. But I'm not going to really get into that. Nah, actually, I'm going to get into it, because why not? Okay. So, in the fight, Obi-Wan is Ben Kenobi in this moment, so he's protecting Luke. And the whole thing is Maul has always hated Obi-Wan. He goes up to Maul, he's ready to fight again. Obi-Wan does, he does his Obi-Wan stance, where his blade is over his head, his hand is out, and he's just ready to fight. That's just how he was back then. 
he does that, but then he stops and he goes into his master's pose, Qui-Gon, because he realizes that Darth Maul, after all this time, has never learned from his experiences. So he goes in Qui-Gon's stance. Darth Maul takes that as an opportunity to do the same thing that he did to Qui-Gon by hitting him in the chin with his hilt, throwing him off, and, you know, how that, how that ended. So, Ob- or Darth Maul just rushes Obi-Wan, and as soon as he tries to do the exact same thing, Obi-Wan knew he was going to try to do the exact same thing. He cut his hilt in half, and Darth Maul falls. He lost that battle. He lost this entire battle that he's been wanting to have all his life to just finish off Obi-Wan. He asks Obi-Wan to see the Chosen One, and Obi-Wan says yes. Everybody thinks he's talking about Luke, but he's actually talking about Anakin because he technically has met Anakin. Well, not well, yeah, he's technically met Anakin. But anyway, I, that's why I think Star Wars has one of the best stories in fiction. So, what's your... What's I just... Your I, don't, I don't like when, like... I don't really know what to call it, but when they make movies and put them in the middle of movies mm-hmm. and they take place before movies and stuff, like... Does that confuse you? I watched Transformers recently mm-hmm. and, like, the new Transformers movies or the new Transformer movie takes place like sometime in the middle of movies or something and Mm -hmm. it's just it's kind of confusing to watch when everything's out of order and everything's out of place so i think that's a fair statement but when you realize i feel like that's a i like that because with best example let me think best example mandalorian season two or whatever that's taking place after the sixth one before the seventh one obviously and Ahsoka and Luke are interacting, and we've never seen that before, obviously. Uh, Ahsoka and Luke are interacting, and they're just talking, and then Ahsoka's like, you remind me so much of your father. And, of course, she would know because she was Anakin's Padawan. And I'm just like, it's the small things like that that I'm like, yeah, that's really cool. You know, we haven't yeah. really seen that in anything, and I'm just like, I really like that a lot. That's that's kind of why I like that, but I do get what you're saying. I feel like that's um, a lot of people's kind of stance on that. All right, well, you got a point. Yeah, nice. One, one. All right, what, what's your what's your fourth? All right, uh, kind of got two for this one, but I'm gonna just I'm gonna just go with this one. Uh, do both. Do both. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tyler Hecklin, who's from uh the show Superman and Lois, is the best live action Superman by far. Fair. And I'm uh, not mad at that. Man of Steel ruined Superman. Very fair. Um, I'm actually not mad at that because I say that because you don't want to give me a point. No, it's because of some fair points that people have made that I've talked to and they were right. Like they, he was kind of like brutish, you know, he wasn't like, yeah, he wasn't Superman, you know, he wasn't like, he wasn't necessarily hope, Mm -hmm. you know, you know what I'm saying? That movie kind of tricked me into thinking I didn't like Superman. Oh, wow. And then I watched everything else, and I'm like, wait, I do like Superman. That's fair. I'm not mad at that at all. I'm not mad at that at all. All right, you ready? Yeah. Coming in with heat. All right. Toby movies, the Toby Spider-Man movies, yep. are only are overrated and put on such a high pedestal because of nostalgia. It's not wrong at all. You don't you don't disagree? I completely agree. Wow, you are the like first person oh, man, to kind of agree with me there. Like, I feel like it's just not that good. It's it's really not. It's I not. mean, it's it's like it's it's pretty good for like what it is, but when you see like all the other Spider Man movies, it just kind of bumps it down mm-hmm. oh yeah absolutely each time a spider-man movie comes out yeah like andrew's movies they're not they're not bad i like his movies a lot well, he's the, my favorite the, Spider-Man. the second one's it's not that good but the first one i thought was pretty good i like them both i'm not gonna lie i feel like i feel like the second one kind of was doing too much with the villains a little bit yeah. i think if electro stayed the main villain it definitely would have been more higher on the kind of thing but i but obviously gwen wouldn't have died or at yeah. least they could have done it another way. But no, I, yeah, yeah, no, I agree with your statement. That's very true. It does just keep bumping down. And like anybody who was older would probably say I'm wrong, but I'm just like, 
tell me why you think that. Every time I've asked someone that, they say, you don't know what it's like going to the movies, seeing the first ever Spider-Man. I yeah. said, so is nostalgia. You know what Pretty I'm saying? Pretty much. But yeah, I mean, that's hot takes. Tie. Tie. That's a tie. I'm going to try to get you in here another time. I know you're an AP micro, so I don't. that'll yeah. be a little tough. Um, okay. So that's our hot takes. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, and then we'll be doing, I'm going to be doing some other game modes as well, or like not game modes, but like kind of fun games to do, you know? So it's time to get into the, time to get into the meat. We have our topics and the first topic is going to be Blue Beetle. I know we're a lot, we're very late on this, but I saw it on Sunday and I wanted to talk about it. And then, uh, a little mini topic after that's going to be another thing. And then we'll be doing topic two, a little mini topic, and then topic three. And then we'll end it off with there. So, Blue Beetle, what'd you think? I thought it was pretty good. Rating? What's your rating? Rating. Mm. All right. I'd give it like a seven. Okay. Yeah, like well, it's, it's better. Well, mm, 6.5. Really? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I, I, I had to give it an eight. Eight. Yeah. So you think it's in the top twenty percent of movies ever made? I feel like going into the deeper aspects of that, no. But I still think it's an eight. For various reasons. Like I have my reasons. Obviously I'm okay. gonna let you I'm gonna let you just give your thoughts on it and we'll kinda and then I'll give you my thoughts. It was it was pretty good. It's just it's nothing that special. It's nothing that crazy. Yeah. Yeah, no, like, it's definitely a stereotypical hero movie. I, I definitely like the character. I mean, I've liked the character since, you know, before the mm -hmm. movie. And, I mean, I they did it pretty well. But it was just nothing crazy about it. No, I agree. It, but it was good. I would say for, it would, for a rating, it would be low sevens, high, or no, high sevens, low eight. Okay. Um. And there, I have my reasons. It's not just because it's like, the uh what's it called um recency bias mm -hmm. there are i feel like there are a lot of compelling things that brought me more into it but obviously i kind of have my you know iffies about it i think that the casting uh jolo Manuela, i love him um yeah me too cobra kai he was my miguel's my favorite character he played him really well um and he was really enjoyable in that movie. I think mm -hmm. he really embodies Blue Beetle, and I think he'll do some really good things in the future with his character. I think that the story, I think the story was pretty solid. The villain was interesting, I will say. I like the, okay. the I like the dude though. I like him more, but we'll get into that in a second. The whole cast i liked what i think was very enjoyable george lopez stood out a yeah. lot he was hilarious in that movie i loved him in that movie I, I literally was like laughing so hard because of some of the things he was like saying or doing like when he was like he was like mama he took the taco then he started like he started collapsing <laughs> that made me that made me laugh so hard i loved it and i would say that it was really enjoyable for me, and I just think that the CGI was great. Yeah, CGI. Surprisingly, was, yeah, I know. They've been kind of well. I have seen that the suit was for the most part practical. Yeah, the suit was like real, like they so, had it on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. But recently, CGI it's been bad. is not in anything. Yeah, recently, you know, but the CGI was really good. Yeah, I really liked the CGI. The fight scenes were really cool to me. I really liked the fight scenes, especially when he pulled out Cloud Sword, the Buster mm -hmm. Sword. Really cool. Me and my uh, me and my friends started like geeking out. Now the issues I had with the movie were more so more so towards the end. There are some things that I think they would. I wish they should have done. For example, when they went to go save Miguel, um, I think that the mom and the grandma should have stayed back because the, but there's a reason i know you're kind of just like why but there's a reason mm -hmm. so if anything i think the sister the uncle and the jenny the girl mm -hmm. they played the biggest parts in the like family or whatever well jenny's not part of the family but they the uncle and sister played the biggest parts in the family yeah. and jenny obviously was a big part because she technically started quote unquote started this whole thing the 
whole thing of the whole family going, which I completely understand. Like, I understand why they did that. I, and me, personally, I just wish they didn't. Because with the grandma, the Revolutionary Army stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool, but, you know... She got a disco machine gun, like like it, like a, that was unnecessary. Just a little joke they threw in there, but it it didn't land. It didn't land for yeah. me. I, I was just sitting there, like, okay, whatever. The grandma was too cool, like too cool, unrealistically cool. I, I yeah, I, I it, it didn't land. I didn't like that too much. The mom was just there for I guess words of encouragement, but she didn't necessarily do anything. I don't remember the mom. Exactly my point. That's exactly my yeah. point. Um. So that was kind of it, like a lot. Some one issue for me, it, it just didn't land for me, and I think they should have stayed back because I feel like it would have been more of an impact, impactful moment or moments with just the, the sister, the uncle, and the uh, and Jenny. The other issue I had, very small issue, very small issue, was in the end when Miguel was like dying, and he was talking to his dad. That moment was really good. I really liked that moment, mm -hmm. but. I feel like it was kind of dragged out a little bit. I feel like it was dragged a yeah. bit longer than it needed to be. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it was that was very, very interesting. I think that the message, the message that the movie can kind of play on that a lot of people are forgotten because of the higher ups and how we are just evolving and moving up. Yeah. Technology getting bigger, but a lot of people are being left behind. I feel like that message is really good. They really played that very well. But overall, I do like the movie. What were what were some of your issues? I mean, I didn't really have any direct issues with it. Like, watching it, I just, I, I mean, I had a fun time. It mm -hmm. was a good movie. It was pretty funny. Yeah. Like, compared to a lot of movies, now they kind of throw in some cheesy jokes. Yeah, this movie was like, funny. It was yeah. really funny. But, I mean, it was pretty funny. Yeah, I like I it. mean, you've convinced me. I give it a 7.2. See, perfect. That's what I'm saying. See, there's, there's a lot of good qualities to it. it I think, like, Blue Beetle, like the character it was just the best part of the movie and i think that's a good thing yeah no absolutely he's the main character like the supports they were pretty good but i think a uh, blue beetle being like the central best part of the movie i think that that added a lot to it so yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. um so yeah those are kind of our thoughts on blue beetle yeah i and really enjoyable i think they definitely one of the better dc movies would you agree yeah I think, and this is kind of, this is the start to James Gunn's universe. Yeah, but when do you ever think we'll see him again? That I was actually thinking about that leaving the theater, not, not anytime soon. But yeah. I think this is a stronger start to James Gunn's universe. Because I'm pretty sure they said James Gunn didn't necessarily have anything to do with this movie. Mm -hmm. But it's a great start. Great start. Um, yeah. But yeah, those are kind of just our thoughts. A little subtopic, our little mini topic. We have the Aquaman teaser came out and the Aquaman trailer will be coming out sometime soon. What do you think? You excited? You're going to watch it? It's so weird how they've refused to market this movie. Like, the movie comes out in December, right? And mm -hmm. you've got nothing. It's it's a little weird. Yeah. And I, I, I can understand it because I guess Blue Beetle didn't actually do that well in the mm -hmm. box office. So yeah. they'd kind of be hesitant to put out a whole bunch of Aquaman stuff, especially, you know, with all the stuff going around it, the legal stuff. So Yeah. No, yeah, I mean, I'm going to check it out. But, yeah, that, that does make sense, though. Um, but we're going to make these other topics pretty quick. Got 10 minutes left, so we're going to be kind of quick about it. Um, topic two. We have Starfield. It, uh, I know, Caleb, you don't have too much knowledge on it, but it was a flop. It, it definitely flopped. Um, the gameplay got leaked. The concept was really interesting. For me, the gameplay was all right. I think there were a lot of things or a few things that took me out of it that I think they could have added in there to really give immersion of the space exploration aspect. So I kind of have my own, own little grabs about that, but... Um, do you so do you know like have you seen like any gameplay or have you seen anything like that? A little bit, but not really. That little bit that you saw, did you think it was like eh? Not my type of game. I think okay. I think it's a type of game that reaches a very like specific audience. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. And when it 
fails in that audience is kind of done. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Bethesda's known for Fallout and Skyrim, for anybody who doesn't know. Those games are known to be one of the greatest games to be made. I really like Fallout 4. I like the Elder Scrolls games. Um, but Starfield was kind of just a flop. It wasn't really that good. It wasn't really that interesting to me. I didn't. I wasn't too fond of it after playing it a little bit. Um, but luckily it was only on Game Pass. I had to spend an, I spent an extra 30 for like the deluxe, but it's kind of whatever. But it sucks, but you know, what, what can you do now? It was okay. But just for the uh, mini topic, little number two, Xbox is coming out with a MasterCard, funny enough. And the whole point of the MasterCard is the Xbox MasterCard card holders can earn card points for every $1 they spend with bonus points for the Microsoft Store products, for streaming services like Netflix or anything like that, food delivery, Grubhub, gas, and such like those. And what and these things that you do and spend this card on, depending on what it is, you'll get a certain amount of points that you can spend on Xbox games or Xbox DLCs. A lot of people are really into it and like that idea i think that idea is great it's really interesting i've never seen anything like that and i think that it could be really really cool what do you think if you have any thoughts it's gonna take a lot for me to switch but i mean that's a good deal xbox has been taking w's lately yeah they, playstation they bumped up the ps plus prices yeah oh i've seen those prices those prices are atrocious it's it's tragic but you know we move yeah, we move forward. And PlayStation is still better. Objectively. Next topic. Next topic. Objectively. Next topic. Objectively. Xbox is better. Mm, no. Mm, yeah. Next topic. Who's been taking W's lately? Look. PlayStation. Do you have God of War? Do you have, exactly. do you have a whole company, Bethesda, that's known for making great games? A lot of people. Okay, what games have they made? Skyrim. Um... All the Fallout games, all the Skyrim games, a bunch of games. Wolfenstein. When, when is the last time you've ever seen somebody play those? It's been 10 years. Still now. It's been 10 years. Still now. I don't think so. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Game Pass I do, is a I steal. Do hate the game. Game Pass is better than PS Plus. Objectively. Okay. You can have that. Okay. We're getting streaming on, X, on Discord for Xbox pretty soon. We're also getting off topic. <laughs> I'm just saying, we've been taking some massive W's lately, I think. Yeah, Although, the only, but here's the thing, though. Everything I would tell my friends, the only argument you guys have is exclusives. And that's really why you buy a console, though. Hey, man. All I'm saying is all you have is exclusives. We have many things going for us. We got Game Pass, 100-plus games for only $18 a month. Um, we have Bethesda. We have a whole company. We have Ubisoft Plus now. We have EA Play. We have many, 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 many things. It's the same. And uh -huh. Call of Duty's coming on Game Pass soon. All of them. It's good for you guys. Objectively, Xbox. All right. And basically, that's our subtopic for the Xbox MasterCards. I think that's going to be really fun. Got a little uh -huh. off topic there. Just had to educate. Just had to educate. Yeah, all right. Now, <laughs> topic three, Spider-Man 2, PS4. Speaking of PS4, Spider-Man 2 has some released some new images of what the villains are going to look like, or the main villains of the story. I think it looks really good. Yeah. And the graphics, I've seen the graphics. The graphics are on point. I love how they're looking. It looks really good. I've seen some gameplay. I'm gonna be pre-ordering because Arachnite is one of yeah. the one of the suits. I love Arachnite suit. I have his Funko Pop in my room, so that's definitely I'm I'm gonna be buying that. What do you What do you think of this? What are, are you excited? I mean, my eyes bought it the second the trailer came out. Oh yeah, absolutely. The, the second it was announced, it was like it's the first game I've ever played. Mm. Oh really? It might be my favorite game. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's very fair. It's like I I bought game. a PlayStation for that game, mm -hmm. and ever since then. I've just been playing games, so yeah, it'll it'll be bought. Oh, that yeah, that transaction will go through. Oh yeah, I love it, and it's just like, except for that so stupid funny. hairstyle that they gave Miles. I like it. Why do they keep doing that? To I like it. Every character. I like I, I like know. it. 
You don't like it? No. I'm, I'm for it. Peter's hair style kind of looks kind of funny. It's just like regular hair. I don't know. It's just, just kind of... They shouldn't have changed the face model. I know. I know. I hate this one. It's, it's growing on me a little bit, but the last one is just perfect. Yeah, I agree. It was so good. Yeah. It was so good. You were everything I wanted to be. Oh, my God. My heart. I want to see what kind of They should give you the option. Yeah, I agree. Change it. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what do you think? What what kind of suits do you want to see? I feel like we got everything. You think so? Yeah. Like, what? I don't specifically remember any suits that I was like, yeah, they should have this in the game. Superior Spider-Man. Okay. Yeah. So he's my favorite Spider-Man. I want to see that bad. You can do... You can do Cosmic Spider-Man, obviously, but he's obviously ain't gonna have the power. I mean, it's just a suit. Yeah, it's just a suit. So I want to see that. Beyonder would be cool. It's kind of plain looking, but you, the eyes glow, you know. Yeah. That'd be cool to see. Mm, the kind of creepier ones I want to see. Maybe there's a few suits, but I feel like a lot of them are gonna be made up for for the game. I'm fine with that. Some original yeah, concepts. Too. That'd be really cool. And I know that you should be able to switch to the Venom side. Uh, yeah. Venom uh, suit for every suit. Yeah, it's going to be cool. It's going to be really cool. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. I think this one's going to come. It comes out October 20th, right? I think, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited. Who, who do you about. think Venom's going to be? Eddie. Or not Eddie. Um, Norman. That's how it was in the comics at first. It's going to be Peter. I'm calling it now. No, no, I doubt it. It's going to be Peter. Oh, actually, that's fair. No, 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 that makes sense because we haven't seen them together, like, in the same, yeah. like, area. That's, they, that's they fair. They haven't been seen in the same room, so how do we know they're not the same person? Here's the theory, working th- working theory. It'll be um, Harry at first because he was in the tube and, they were te- and Norman was testing the symbiote at the end of the Spider-Man game. Yeah. Then it will become Peter. And Miles is going to have to stop him using the Venom Blast or whatever he needs to do. Working theory, though. I think it's going to be Peter. Everybody's saying in the trailer, like, oh, it looks like it's going to be Norman. but I wouldn't be surprised. Or, yeah, Norman or Harry. I wouldn't be surprised. But, I mean, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm really excited. Any, uh, Any last thoughts to get out? No. All right. Well, well, everybody. That is episode one, season, or that's season one, episode one of Cultureverse, one of many this school year. And since I'm here for the first semester and second semester, there'll be a lot more episodes coming out this season. I hope you all have a great day. I hope you have a great school day or whatever you're doing, whenever you're listening to this. And, you know, just have a good day, have a good work day, whatever you're doing. We'll catch you later, Nova.